Sitting next to me is the man who observed a wet paper bag may not hold much, but it will hold another wet paper bag. Huh? He is Bruce de Blanc. Well, and that's very impressive because I'm going to let you in on something, uh, folks. This is take two, and he actually came up with a new introduction for take two, which means he's Bazo, and you're watching Bruce the Blog goes Bazo. Good evening, and this is the behavior. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bruce the Blog Goes Bazo. Every week, we, of course, do remind you that we're brought to you by the Penny Saver, which is owned by Chase Media Group, and that we always thank Carla Chase, the CEO of Chase Media Group, and Frank J. Rich. And uh, this week, for the first time in the year that we've been on the air, we're not only thanking Frank J. Rich on the air, we're thanking him in person because he's sitting right here with us. Uh, as our special guest for this episode to talk about his new novel, Raising Father. So thanks, Frank, for being with us. Thank you and I think he's also me. going to explain right. how hard it is to put up with our antics when he goes out to dinner and people say, how do you do it? <laughs> well, that, that would have to be a whole separate show. But, anyhow, <laughs> um, but I see Frank every day in the office and even on weekends, uh, you know, on occasion. And so... Um, it's great to have you here, Frank. And you know, I know I know a lot about the book, um, but we, of course we want you to, t to tell us a little bit about what what the novel is about. Yeah, I, I think raising fathers is about the struggle in the human condition to find meaning in all things. Um, it uh, illuminates the giftedness in each um, uh, for the unique contribution that is theirs. And it uh, uses the protagonists in the story um, as caricatures of the simple ethic uh, in a family drama that is at times thrilling and, and uh, heartwarming. Yeah. I, I think it appeals to uh, uh, the, es the essential power in women to affect others for the good, mm -hmm. uh, to those who may have special needs children or um, gifted children. Uh, to those who need a spirit lift and those that are emptied of it. Right. Um, to those who uh, are enlightened of a desire for a better world and to, I think, readers young and old. Um, I guess uh, I like to think of it as a, as a, a, a joining to, a together of people in, right. in spirit and mind um, uh, for the journey through life and that if... Uh, the hope is that we, uh, having read it, will see people differently than we saw them before. And, and, and I know when you're talking about uh, the uniqueness in people and certain uh, gifts that people may have, in, th in this case, the lead character, Max Sarnt, is a painter, right, an artist. Mm -hmm. um, but isn't it also that you're saying, um, in many cases, and this is, uh, I think, part of the core message of the book, people don't even know it themselves. They don't even know what's inside of them that they're capable of doing. Right. Yeah, I think that's a fair statement. Um, Max is a borderline intellect um, uh, who measures uh, low by comparison to, quote, normal people. He has some oddities. He has a, a fixated stare right. uh, to some degree and a parting of the lips that uh, pretty much stays that way. And, uh, and people who meet him at first uh, see the oddity in him. Um, and, uh, and then when they get to know him, uh, they see the giftedness. Um, Can I segue here a second? Uh, sure. Because you've talked about art and the gift and the writing itself being a gift. Uh, I believe it has to because I, I read your your column where you announced the, uh, and posted your column on Bazo at Work where you announced the book being done and all this. And you had mentioned you had done this book, you're working on another book in outline, you're doing your columns, and you want to do, I believe, a, a compendium of your columns, and you've right. got an yeah. idea in your head for another book, even though you're working on another book. Am I correct that that's the order so far? 
that was in that column. Uh, I mean, roughly. Yeah. Roughly. I mean, we yeah. got the order right. Uh, that's got to take a discipline. It's got to take an immense discipline to put this together. People think anybody could write a book, like anybody could t do anybody's job. But it, it, and because I, I know that people have said, Andy, you should write a book about your life in the city called I'm not a role model. <laughs> but anyway, it, I don't have that discipline. How do you get this kind of discipline to not only do this, but start this other stuff that you talk about you as have? Well, in, as well as help run the company. By right. The we're, 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 this <laughs> right. is a given. Right, we're right. talking about you still have your day job. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the writing part because um, I, th I think really the discipline uh, for a writer is a compulsion to write. So I don't think I don't think that he is like a businessman. I'm a businessman, and then I'm also a writer. Uh, but the but the compulsion to write is the discipline. There there isn't uh, there isn't anything else that drives a writer, uh, but the need to write. But you have to make the time. You know, isn't that the, a discipline? The, the, to it, I mean, it forces itself on you. I mean, during the process of writing this particular book. Uh -huh. Did you have a schedule worked out where you devoted, or did you write when the urge struck you? No, I, the, the idea uh, uh, for the book came to mind in April of 2003, and uh, by the end of August it was written. Really? Um, mm -hmm. so, wow. I, so the obvious question I think any interviewer would ask in this case is, so in the intervening nine years, is it just that you put it aside and... and well, I, that's the other side. I'm a businessman. Right. And I don't have a lot of time. And, and uh, so publishing the book was the, was the hard part because it, it meant dealing with the unknown. I'd never published a book before, so I really didn't know what to do. Um, I, had, I have some sense of it, of course, but, uh, but it just took the time to gather all the pieces together to negotiate with publishers. and. And you know there were two who accepted the book, and and uh, and I had to you know manage those details, and and it was it was honestly difficult for them to stay up with me, and so then I would lose my focus on that and have to get the things that you know earn a living and that sort of stuff, and and uh, just finally uh, it came together. But we get somebody's watching this show wants to write that has their book inside. Them. Yeah. What would you tell them to start with? How would you tell them to start? Instead of just you know to get to get that mm. out now. Yeah, it's a fair question. I'm no expert about that. No, at, at we, that. you can only go by your own evidence. <coughs> now, I'm not asking you to give the the, uh, the one that's in that they teach you in course. You've lived it. Mm. Give them a piece of your experience. Mm. I would say this that uh, that in every one there is a story or mm. stories, and uh, and those compelled to communicate them ought to write. I, mean, I think everybody ought to write. I think that this men especially ought to write. They ought to write poetry because it gets into something that they're not used to doing or communicating their innermost feelings. Women are, are better at that. And so, so the recommendation would be write, tell your story. Get an editor like Bruce. Uh, uh, every writer needs an editor and clean it up. But the story is unique to the person telling it. And, and so as well, and it's also that expression you always hear, write what you know. And that's one of the things I wanted to ask you too, Frank, is, is you know, portions of this or even the underlying narrative based on your own personal experiences or? Well, sure, I, I, I don't want to sound hackneyed, but the, every, every writer is writing from his experience. Right. And it, it may not be an actual experience. I, I mean, I imagine this book. So is it based on my experience? Yes. Do I have a father who is borderline intellect and a, and a well-known painter? No. Is there anyone in my right. family like that? No. Right. Um, so you uh, sort of synthesize yeah. the characters based on your yeah. experience. I do have twin girls. Right. Yes, yes. I know so that. Right. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. I, I picked that up definitely. Yeah. But also when you talk about poetry, which I know you also write, and mm -hmm. I know you also have written children's stories. And mm -hmm. now. In this particular edition of the book on, on page 83, there is a poem you have in here, The Least of Us. So is, is that something that you, is that somebody else's poem or? No, it's my oh, poem. It, oh, so it is your poem. Mm -hmm. Oh. Do you want him to read it? You brought it up. Yeah, no, I thought that's very good. I liked it. Yeah. Frank, and it's sort of, read it? and it is sort of, it's like a children's type of uh, yeah. you know, theme. Yeah. But it has that kind of quality to it. Yeah. yeah but it fits. I'll be happy to read it. Yeah, yeah. Because like. I think that's, a, that's sort of a good uh, <coughs> passage to read on, on the air. Yeah. I yeah. figured that's why you brought the, it the up. The least of us, <laughs> yes, that is. 
There was a boy, the story goes, who didn't have a shoe, not one for sure, not two, but most amazed at knowing him because of what he knew. It hardly mattered to him that people stopped to stare at his threadbare clothes and airborne toes. He never seemed to care. And most were awestruck when they heard their names at greeting him. For once he heard it, none could hold it better than young Jim. He knew the names of trees, too, and the flowers of every kind, the whereabouts of monarchs as they wended northward blind. He called out to the birds that flew far above the trees and whispered to each in its native call with clarity and ease. He knew why home runs finally fell and what turned seas to salt. He knew just how tall we'd grow and what makes ice cream malts. He knew when summer started and when the rain would fall. In fact, little Jim, but nine years old, just simply knew it all. He walked to school while others rode their bikes. He liked it because it meant some play with Spike, who seemed to know Jim just for what he was, a boy in awe of everything, just cause. He didn't have a fancy home, no car to ride or bike, and though he wandered over everything, he never saw their fright that ogled him for what he lacked and awed with such delight, the simple truth in everyone that God's made each just right. <laughs> that is a good one. Yeah, it is. That it is, is good. Is, yeah. Now, i, I got to go back to something you had said earlier about, because uh, for us, we're going to be, I, we'll get back to the book again, and this is just kind of jump around. We're not rehearsed, you know. <laughs> but you said something about two published finally accepted the book. Uh -huh. Now, I know that to be a businessman, you have to have an ego. You got the first rejection. Uh huh. What was it like? Because you know people are going to want to do it, and they're going to find a rejection. What made you not take no for an answer? Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> there were a number of them. The first was uh, a rejection by actually a, uh, an agent in New York City whom I knew briefly uh, by an author that she represented whom I knew better. Um, <clears throat> And you know, honestly, Andy, the, the answers in the question, I mean, nobody likes to hear that, that someone else viewed something that they did as not good enough in the... Uh, but how do you <laughs> tell people not to take no for an answer? Some people would take the defeat and then crawl in their but hole. When you say oh, that, you, you mean keep going. Yes, or, what is or, it or, they, or. that makes a person keep going till they finally get to the yes? Well, I, I again, you know, this I, is your experience, yeah, but I mean, people I, are going to relate to you. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I can give you know the local quiche, so to speak. I mean, <laughs> never give up. But the, I think the thing is that um, uh, that we are we are born with a, with an actualizing spirit, so it it causes us to find uh, better and better, uh, and 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 that's called self actualization. So. Um, so in each of us, we have this drive to do better, to accomplish more, to achieve a goal, and to reach ultimately self-fulfillment, which is the highest goal. So if you focus on the simple things like the self-fulfillment, is it good enough that you wrote a book? Not many people have done that. Is it, is it, is it, if it's not, then you want to publish it. And today, it's easy to publish a book. Really? Very easy. That's to something I didn't well, know. Because of technology. And, yeah. Yeah. It's easy to the publish internet, it yourself. Yeah. Right, self publish Or yeah. to go to a self publisher right. and have it published. But you need to go any place to, to publish a book. So, so it's a very easy thing to do. So I encourage people if you have a story to tell, tell it, self publish, and then do the best you can to, uh, to uh, create a, a, a magnet around it. Yeah, in, in I, fact, you know, just to that point, I want that's, I, um, I just wanted to segue into what? the self-publishing. Well, no, what I was going to mention just as a, a prime example of that trend is that in the uh, Sunday New York Times book review, this company Ex Libris, which is one of the ones that's a self-publishing, what they've been doing, which I think is very interesting, um, they take out a full-page ad in the New York Times book review, and they'll list, I don't know, 20 or more books that people have self-published through Ex Libris. And, and it's very interesting. I like to look at it just to see the spectrum of topics. And, Can and, I just take know, 30 yeah, seconds for yeah. you to tell people what's involved in self-publishing? Just a quick synopsis versus sure. going to another publisher? Sure. Yo, publisher, publisher, could you uh, just give sure. a quick synopsis? There, there are a variety of ways to do it. The simplest way is to identify a self-publisher or a publisher right. of self-books. Uh, not self-books, but but self-published books. Um, 
the the but. But, but it but it is it is easy enough to find um, uh, something like Tango Books um, uh, uh, to publish a book from beginning to end. Right. Prepare the story. You upload the story. You prepare a cover. You upload the cover. Uh, you prepare uh, the links to it, and uh, and you upload those. All of that is facilitated by those who are encouraging uh, individuals to publish. The right, and the they writers. got to now the 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 author has, has to, to pay. pay. Right. That's what I'm saying. Well, and yeah, that's the difference is that they're no. putting up the upfront money. No, the, the, in some self-publishing realms, the author will pay, uh, in, and they will pay various things. You can get a book self-published by such a company for three to five hundred dollars. Others will charge you much more because they right. package marketing with uh, with the okay. book. I think that's, that's, I mean, that's one I like the one I mentioned. Well, actually, this is what I mean. Yeah. Who does the marketing? And then and then let me just uh, add one piece to that. And then and then there are like Tango Books, free, completely free, no charge oh, whatsoever. Oh, really? Completely tr free. And also, if you publish, if you ha prepare a book, you can go on KDP, which is Kindle Digital Publishing, mm -hmm. and you can publish your book an ebook online. You share in the royalties of the book, 70-30, depend on the, the program well, The author gets 70%? The author gets 70% and, yeah. and they get 30%. So they're like an agent? In, in a manner of speaking, they're a distributor. Are, they're right. a marketing right. arm. Right. So, so they're going to they're try to get your fee. book out as much as possible. They have some mechanisms by which you can also market the book um, called uh, KDP Select. And uh, you have a 90-day period in which they have exclusive uh, uh, sale of your e-book. E and then the revenues, and they do uh, an extensive marketing on the book, and then the revenues are and, a little and, less to you. And you did, didn't you uh, convert I, this, Frank, to I, digital? I, it yeah. is. It's an yeah. e-book, yeah. yeah. So now with yeah. this book and the characters and the story, uh, I was once told that everybody's book is there like their child because it's their idea. They, they start with the, the seed of the idea, and then the book is the final birth. Did you ever feel like giving up during the process, saying what's the use, or did, did you just always know that this was going to be? No, never. But, but, you know, understand that this is a simple book and a simple story. Uh, if, if simple were, for you, but for somebody that no, hasn't done it. No, no, I'm not saying it. it's simple to write. I'm, I'm saying that it, it is a simple story. For a book that requires research, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, capacity to hold many, many disparate things together in a story that is connected throughout, that's a challenging thing to do. This is not that kind of book. This is a simple book. Now, I, I have on the boards a book which is, which is to uh, profile the, the culture of American business today. That's a complicated mm -hmm. book. It requires a lot of research and stories. And, uh, and, and they have to tie together, and there has to be a cause and effect and a solution, so to speak. That's going to be a hard book to write, but it's a compelling story that I think people will be interested in. You know, also I wanted to, to bring in you know, something that we talk on the show a, a, a lot about uh, week to week is uh, things that relate to community. Yes. You know, just all kind of, it could be politics, uh, it could be cultural, um, it could be people's behavior. And, and there are a lot of themes in this book, Frank, um, you know, that you and I uh, talk about on a general, ongoing basis just as topics. You know. mm -hmm. But one of them that, of course, I picked up is some of the thoughts in here, which come from you, so it's your voice, about, about the state of community today and that there isn't enough of a sense of a community. But what I found really um, you know, compelling as an idea is, like you're saying as one example, why is it then in a neighborhood everybody has all the same things, right? And like I think tools are an obvious example. In other words, um, for one thing it's sort of waste in a sense. Like so, I, I live on you know a cul-de-sac on a block, and everybody has you know lawn mowers and all kinds of tools. But every so often you will go over to a neighbor and borrow something that you need. We have a really long ladder that neighbors like to. But what you're saying is why isn't there more of a communal, right, repository of things like that that you know, on a given block, 20 homes could share the same things, right? Which I think is a very interesting idea. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's just an example, um, at a shed at the, at, at, on a corner or someplace that has all of these tools that people go share. It's like a library, like a right, lending right, library. Yeah. <coughs> right. and, and it saves people money. P people sometimes do not have the funds to spend a couple hundred dollars on a good ladder right. and uh, would enjoy the opportunity to borrow it from a neighbor, and it would bring them closer together. together. Yeah. It also does something else. It, it Make them hate each other because when they don't take care of it, well, but see, mm, but see, <laughs> well, that's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> but see, there, there's the opportunity that if it would make them hate each other, then it might make them uh, s do a little self-reflection and learn to forgive them for that ah, at the same nature, time. That's why it doesn't work. Everybody wants what's theirs. They want their own lawnmower. They well, want, I mean, they'll borrow somebody's ladder because you don't always need a ladder. Right. But you always need a lawnmower yeah, but, if you have a piece but of don't you But don't you also sort of address that point when you talk about... Um, you sort of riff in a matter of speaking on freedoms and how they've sort of almost like runaway freedoms or or people are too greedy about certain the rights the, the pursuit of individual rights right yeah right. Is, is is a chain and of they freedom. end up and you end up impinging on other people's rights yeah but uh, right. the individual <laughs> right is what, what, what the reason this country even exists was individual right not communal rights it was to it's not, uh, it's not exactly what I'm talking out, about. No, to out, what you've done here with your book, what you do with your business, is you unleash the American mind, the entrepreneurial spirit, to make your life better than it started and to make your kid's life better than what yours was. Now, see, I look at that differently, Andy. I see the conclusion you just made as a natural byproduct of reaching out uh, uh, with your own competencies to help other people succeed at achieving their own goals. My, That's what we do as a company. My father taught me that you cannot sincerely help somebody else without helping yourself in the process. Right. Yeah. That is in any business, in any in endeavor in life. But, but, not, as measured, but not, somebody, not as measured by dollars and cents. No, no, we're not talking about that. I'm talking about that you... That's the human quality that Bruce is referring right. to. And yeah, that's right, the one right. quote, but that's something that is in all of us. It is the yeah. it's, it is the natural order of things that you can help somebody without helping yourself. There is no such thing as really being truly altruistic, because if you get a good pleasure out of doing something yeah, no, I, good, you're right. I mean that's a, that's a fair point. I mean, uh, no, I mean you know, I use that. I say that with our foundation, you know, in memory of, of our son Harrison. I'll say to people, you know, something at the end of the day, it's sort of selfish because it makes me feel good. To do things for people, now, and you know, I know. So there is a certain, and I know the right, stuff you, right. you and your company, and you yourself do for the community, and and it's a good thing. But tell me, I mean, you don't get a self-satisfying benefit out of this. That that I, you know, I've done something that moved the bar a little bit more forward. Well, I, I think what I what I have done, Andy, is to is to is to is to uh, take fuller advantage. Of the of the, the 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 qualities in me that uh, that were imprinted in me, so by my parents, or by my environment, uh, you know, by God, uh, I'm 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 attempting to use all of those things that are available to me to make a difference. Now, positive difference. Uh, making a difference yeah. is a subjective term. Well, you well, mean making a this, positive this, difference? Assumedly. Uh, now, you know, there will be people who will read this and consider that it's trash. And, and so to them, it has the wrong effect. There are others who will read it and think that. Uh, I got to you know, ask you so why? Because we go through this all the time. We all have our own columns and we all do this. Why would somebody that disagrees with what you do, what you stand for, what you write, why do they read us? Never. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 well. what, what, I mean. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna turn I, to you because you do the business <laughs> column. You do the stuff on people's things. Yeah. Why do they read us if they don't like us? Well, you know, my background is behavioral science and economics. Yeah. That's a strange combination. <laughs> but I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I'm really not an qualified to answer that question. I, I think. But you know, they do. Here's the answer to the question that I usually give. Okay, the question is, why do people do what they do? The answer is because they can. <laughs> That's about as close <laughs> as I can do any universal solution. <laughs> you know, the, uh, well, I mean, we should, thanks for mentioning that, that, of course, Frank writes an online and uh, print column in the Penny Saver called ROI for Return on Investment. Um, and but I want to get back to the book because 
a couple of other things you talk about in the book, Frank, which I found you know really uh, interesting to me is um, the whole aspect of will. I mean, you even relate it to loving people, where you're saying it's not, you know, when you love somebody, it's an act of will as much as anything else, right? It's uh, you have to sort of comport yourself to that, um, yeah, in, in a sense, right? Yeah, to love is is an action. It's an action verb, right. and uh, and and loving is uh, is a commitment to doing it. You, you, it's work. I mean, it does it's, take it's work. work. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, the Greek have five words for love, um, and uh, and they are to describe. Uh, uh, friendship, um, uh, passion, um, uh, uh, community love, uh, and God's love, uh, and one more that I've forgotten. Um, and w why is that necessary? Because love has got those characters. Right. And, and so to form a view of it accurately and comprehensively, you need to know those characters. One of the great things about the Greek language is there's many, many words to describe things that we have, may have one word for. Right. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 we are, what is in us more than anything is a will. And, and I think the characters who overcome in this particular book uh, are, are demonstrating the will to overcome in the struggle that is common to all people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a story. It's meant to uh, enrich and, uh, and entertain. Um, it, I'm, I don't mean to, you know, cause it to be a psychoanalytic reflection. I'm not qualified to do right. that. I have no interest in doing that. Right. I, I have an interest always in, in helping people come to an appreciation of who they are and, and how valuable that is to themselves and to those around them should they take full advantage of it. And, and by the way, one of the things that also comes through in the book that I, I very personally uh, relate to is when you say how people can change each other, but, and this is the part where I relate to it, is, is even if one of those persons is no longer here, yeah. right? I mean, Absolutely. you know what I'm referring to, you know. Yeah, but I, but I, like, I feel um, like with our, you know, with losing our son, that Harrison made me a better person when he was here, and he continues to make me a better person. And you're sort yes. of right, saying the same thing. Right? Well, this book opens right. with the leading character, Max's wife, being buried, and she is she is a principal character in this book. It right. is impossible to read this book and not see her in every page. Right. Well, I know from a personal thing, as you've heard me just on this show, but Bruce has talked to me long enough. I quote my father and my grandfather endlessly yeah. that, because now they, my grandfather's been dead for 25 years. My father's been dead for four years. But the impact, the stuff they passed on, the knowledge of their experiences, right. they, you take them to make you. Yeah, absolutely. Who you are. Yeah. Yes. Right. It's, it's yeah. the imprinting in all of us. Right. Yes. And then one other quick thing, but then actually we're running down on time. As, as I only have one become, comment about love, though. Okay. Because love may be a commitment, but I've seen people in love that ought to be committed. I was one of those at one time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but now go ahead with your point because you're running out of time because then we have right. to ask him for a raise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that has to be all fair. Uh, anyhow, so we want to thank uh, Frank J. Rich for being with us and for talking about Raising Father, and you can find out more about this and other works uh, that, that Frank has in development uh, at RaisingFather.com, uh, which you've seen on the screen, I believe, during the, the previous 30 minutes. One quick thing. You mentioned one word, and you just said it quickly. The book will entertain. It's yeah. not there to yeah, well, give it's you... it's a novel. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, and it is entertaining. I, I mean, it, it, that's what I'm saying. This is not Sunday. We're not going to find this in the psych section, right? This no, is going to... No, gonna, yeah. no, no this, it's, it's is, this is... It's literature. This is... <laughs> right. uh, it, literature, like like yeah. to the people that watch this show that take okay. the train. They can yeah. read this on the okay. train, right? Yes. And, yeah. yeah. Yes, they can. And you have to wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, These we'll were my cut. opinions. You may beg to differ. And when Bruce the Blog listens, people talk... Thank you for watching and thank our guest, Frank J. Rich. We'll and see when, you next time. And when Frank talks, we listen. <laughs>